I've done a ton of tutorials on Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Photoshop is a super powerful tool that I use all the time. But for a lot of my client work, especially for large sets of images, those images rarely reach Photoshop. In fact, I do 90% of all the editing I need to do inside of Adobe Lightroom. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately about my Lightroom workflow. So I wanna walk you through how I use Adobe Lightroom as a tool for saving myself a ton of time when editing large batches of images and when doing everything from cataloging, renaming, rating, and exporting for client consumption. So let's get started. First, let's talk about importing. Here I am in Adobe Lightroom, and you'll notice at the top we've got multiple views. If you're familiar with Lightroom, you know that the importing is gonna be done in your library view. So if you're on any other view and you wanna import, just make sure you go over to the library view. So here I'm going to go to import, and I've already prepared some images actually for the sake of this tutorial, and they're on a drive that apparently <laughs> I've never bothered to name. Uh, so I'm gonna go inside of here. So you'll notice that in Lightroom, uh, I have this include subfolders checked on my source. You'll notice that there are actually two folders inside of this Lightroom tutorials. And what I like, because I use memory cards that oftentimes I've put in several different cameras, or perhaps even the camera I'm using has split the files into multiple folders, is I make sure this include subfolders is checked. That way you don't have to select the specific folder you wanna import from, but rather it will just show you all files on that drive. Now, suppose I did wanna import them separately. I'm actually gonna do that this time. I'm gonna uncheck that, I'm gonna to go to portraits. And here I have a selection of images from a really basic portrait session that I did a long time ago, actually, this is years ago. And I just want to import these so that I can start editing them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going here on the right, I'm going to rename these files. So I'm going to name them portrait session. Now I use cu custom settings for my file names. And you can go in here and you can go to edit on your templates and you can do a lot of amazing things with this. And depending on the kind of images you're shooting, this might come in handy. So for example, sometimes I shoot for the same client repeatedly. And so the sessions, if I were to name them for the client, then I would have multiple sets with the same names and the same numbers. So what I can do is I can add a date onto that so that every time I import it, let's say the client's name was AAA services or something like that. Well, I can have AAA services here, but then the date will always be unique, even if the sequence starts with one and is the same. And because I shoot a lot, I make sure in my custom sequence, I'm starting with at least four digits because it's not uncommon for me to shoot over a thousand images for some of my larger events. Sometimes by default, the sequence is set to one. I don't prefer this personally because sometimes inside of computers, the naming conventions will prioritize 11 over one. So I like to make sure that there are leading zeros in my file names. And that's just a preference thing. I found it's easier for sorting in numerical order. So for these images though, portrait session, I don't really need the date. So I'm going to remove that out of here. And I just stuck this little dash in myself. You could put anything you want in there. You could put a dash after that and you can type in um, for fun or personal project whatever you want to put in there and now what's going to happen is all of these will come out as the example shown here so what's really useful is to set up some file naming templates that are going to be useful to you especially geared towards the kind of work you're doing because maybe for one client you're going to want the date in there and for another client you're not in this case i just want some custom text which is already there i want a sequence which is already there and then you could put something like uh, the import number, which you could insert here. Okay, and my custom text is the portrait sessions. So now down here, I get a sample of what my file names are gonna look like. And let me tell you, always, always name your files when you're importing. There's nothing worse than trying to search for files that you might have misplaced 
and all your files are untitled or are the default name that your camera gave them. Now, there is a dialog for apply during import and you can apply settings during import. I personally do not do this and I don't like to do this because this drags down the import time. So essentially Lightroom will try to put one of your presets or one of your development settings onto every single image as it's importing them. I do not use this, but you totally can if you want to. And then here we have destination. I usually check in subfolder. And in this case, for our purposes today, I'm just gonna stick them in documents. Now, normally I would put them on an external hard drive or somewhere else other than on my computer, but I'll just put it in documents for today and I'll put this into subfolder um, portraits. Now, obviously you'd want a little more descriptive of a name, but because this is just for the sake of the tutorial, you can see that I've got documents and then I've got portraits. Now, oftentimes this name is going to be the client and then the folder is going to be the client's name. So if I have a client that I shoot with frequently and I'm going to shoot multiple sessions, I'll have a master folder with that client name and then underneath, instead of just into subfolders, what I'm going to do is organize by date. And then you'll see that it will put a folder underneath the master folder that is just dated. I use this all the time when I shoot regularly with clients over and over again, because I don't need to rename every single folder. I'll just organize it by date. But for our cases today, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just put it all into one folder, call it portraits. All right, so we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and hit import. By the way, I'm also on Instagram where I post a lot more of my art than you're gonna see on my YouTube channel. So if you like the work that I do and you wanna see more of my art or you just wanna cyberstalk me, you can look me up on Instagram at Joseph Brewster and I'd love to communicate with you on that platform as well. So I'm importing all of that into this portraits folder. You can see them coming in right now. And it automatically took me over here to this view where I can see previous import. And here we have my imported images. Now I had some other images from an event on that same card and I wanna import them somewhere different. So I'm going back to this import dialog, go to event photos. And here I have a bunch of event photos that I took and I'm gonna import them into a subfolder called event. And then up here under custom section, I'm gonna put a custom text uh, event title. Now, obviously we would call this something cool. Let's just put cool event like that. Yeah, and on this one, I might actually want to put the date. So I'm gonna check in here and then I'm gonna insert the date just so that I remember when this event was. Cause maybe I'll shoot this event next year for the client and it'd be really nice to remember which year it was, 2022. Hit done. All right, so you can see that it's showing me it's gonna create a new folder there called event. Let's import it. So now I have two folders that I just imported, one called event and one called portraits. So that's it, we've imported them. We have them imported, we have them named, and we have them cataloged neatly inside a folder with a relevant title. So now that we have all these images inside of our Lightroom catalog, how do we go through effectively and review the set? What does reviewing a set of images entail? And how can we make sure that we mark and note these images correctly so that we're not wasting time when we get to the editing phase? That's what we're gonna talk about in part two of the Lightroom workflow. How is it that you use Lightroom and what are some of your favorite tools, tips, tricks, or methods for editing inside of Lightroom? Thank you to all of you who subscribe, like, and comment on these videos. It really helps me feel energized and it gives me ideas on what kind of content you wanna see. So if there's a tutorial you'd love to see me make, please drop me a comment and let me know. My goal is to help you be the best creative you can possibly be and I appreciate all of your support along that journey. I'll see you next time.